Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to share with you a technique that I've been experimenting with for quite a while. At home, I have a 100 watt CAM5 CO2 laser cutter. It's a great machine and does 99% of the things I need it to. But occasionally, I need to cut out parts that exceed the 600 by 400 millimeter working areas. That's where I love these open frame diode lasers that have been showing up in the hobby market for the past couple of years. Unfortunately, the internet is full of negativity and disdain for these little machines. Usually voicing safety concerns, actual usefulness, and overstated capabilities. Thing is, they are able to do something that the larger conventional machines just are not able to do. I've come up with a set of procedures, fixture plate, and printed parts that allows me to cut out parts as large as any material that I'm able to source. You need to cut something four foot by four foot, but your machine can only cut 16 inches square? Totally doable. You need a part that's a full four foot by eight foot? It's going to be a lot of work, but again, not a problem. I'm able to accomplish this by manually indexing the machine on the material being cut. I use a piece of inch and a half wide flat bar that has a series of holes spaced at 380 millimeters. I could have spaced them closer to 400, but most of the parts I engrave or cut are divisible by 15 inches. This setup also requires a set of four 3D printed cones that slip over the rubber feet of the machine. The feet and cones are threaded into the holes closest to the control panel on both the front and rear set of mounting points. If I'm working on an engraving project, which most of these projects are. I start by prepping the artwork using, of all things, Windows Paint. First step is to crop the OD of your image to some multiple of 380 pixels. This image has an OD of 1140 by 760. This makes six panels of 380 square. Three across, two high. I carefully crop the image into panels 380 by 380 and save as each panel with a number that correlates to the position of that panel within the artwork as a whole. Once that's done, I open up Lightburn and draw a 380 millimeter reference square with the center being at 195 over and 195 up. This makes it so that the image is going to be 5 millimeters over and up from machine home. I do this so I don't run into any issues with the software by accidentally bumping into the machine limit switches. Now that I have Lightburn set up and artwork that's all sectioned up, it's time to establish the layout points on the piece of wood that I'm going to be burning the image onto. I start this process by marking out the center of the engraving. This image will end up 30 by 45. My material happens to be 32 by 48, so I have one inch by inch and a half all the way around. I start by marking the short axis of my workpiece with some two inch wide blue painter's tape. I stick a piece of tape along both of the 32 inch sides and make a layout mark at 16 inches from the bottom edge. Next, 24 inches over, marking the center of the 48. The piece of tape for the center needs to be at least 14 inches long, so I can make a mark at the center of the workpiece and also 7.5 inches left of center. This layout mark establishes the left edge of the center panel. I go ahead and run a piece of tape from the minus 7.5 mark 15 inches towards the bottom, then perpendicular across the right side, so I can be sure of where the lower left corner of the center panel is. Now, with my setup, I know that the bottom edge of the flat bar will wind up one quarter inch above the layout lines that mark the center of the short axis. So I lay the flat bar down at the approximate left-right position and set the laser cutter up with the back set of cones into the second set of holes on the flat bar. Next, I power on, home the machine, and scoot the machine left and right until the center of the laser module lines up with the center of the perpendicular layout line of the center panel. If you need to be exact on the placement of the image, you actually want the center of the laser module to be five millimeters to the left of that line. And if you aren't feeling super confident on your numbers, use the frame feature in Lightburn to figure out where you need to put the tape so you can cut a scratch pass so you can be absolutely sure of the position of the bottom of the center panel. Once everything's in place, tape the flat bar down near the edges of the long axis and use a sharpie to mark where the edge of the wood is relative to the flat bar. 
This mark will be super helpful later on when we reposition the flat bar so we can cut the top half of the pattern. Once the flat bar is taped down and you've double checked the offsets, go back to Lightburn and import the JPEG of the number 5 panel. Scale it to 380 and a half millimeters and move the center to 195 over, 195 up. I found that scaling the image to 380 and a half millimeters works pretty well and gives you a half of a millimeter overlap panel to panel. That's a quarter millimeter from the left and a quarter millimeter from the right. All that's left now is to home the machine one last time and press go. I'm using the Creality 40 watt laser module set to precise mode on my Creality Falcon 2. The material I'm using for this demonstration is the 5mm utility plywood you can pick up from Lowe's for about $25 a sheet. It cuts and engraves pretty consistently for the money. I'm running the laser at 13,000 millimeters a minute at 75% power. This gives me pretty decent burn. If I was through cutting, I would use something close to 375 millimeters a minute at 90% power in precise mode or double that speed in normal. Keep in mind when engraving this material that you'll get a different finish if you're cutting with the grain versus across the grain. After the center panel is finished, I shift the machine one set of holes either to the left or the right. Be sure to hone the machine after you've physically moved it to the new set of holes. Next, delete panel 5 and import your next JPEG. Again, scale the panel to 380.5 millimeters and move the center to 195 over. 195 up, home the machine again, and press go. Once all the panels are engraved along one side of the fixture, it's time to reset the flat bar. For my setup, I use a 1-2-3 block to mark a layout line 3 inches towards the bottom of the material. Go ahead and mark this position on the blue tape and move the flat bar down to where it's a little over an eighth of an inch off that line. The real number for my setup is 2.85 down or 150 thousandths up from the new layout line. At this time, I reposition the laser from using the cones on the back feet to using the ones on the front feet. Next, I make sure that I haven't shifted the flat bar left or right from when I scooted it three inches towards me. That's where that sharpie mark that I made earlier, marking the reference between the edge of the wood and the placement of the flat bar really comes in handy. Once I'm confident that I've repositioned the laser and flat bar correctly, and I have 150,000 showing from the layout line to the bottom edge of the flat bar, I import the number two panel, home the machine, and press go. Of course, if I'm not confident that I have everything positioned correctly, I'll take a moment and cut a scratch pass scribing the layout rectangle that I drew in Lightburn at the very beginning. I'll set it up to cut somewhere around 10,000 millimeters a minute at 15 to 20 percent power, just to make sure that everything lines up. Once the number two panel is finished, move the cutter to number one position, cut that panel, then the number three position, cut that panel. Once all the images are engraved, you might have slightly darker lines where the patterns overlap. I've had pretty good luck evening them out, either using steel wool or some sandpaper and doing it by hand. I've used this on a couple projects, and so far it's worked really pretty well. I hope you're able to take some of this information and adapt it to a project that you're working on. Thanks again for all the comments and suggestions you guys have been leaving me. If you have any other great ideas or materials or processes that you think I should try out, be sure to leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Where are you coming? Come on. Yes. What do you want? What does the kitty want? What does the other kitty want?
What? What? What do you want? Meow? What do you want? Meow? 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 Meow. You are you gonna help me? New treats are always the best treats. Isn't that right? 